Hello, welcome to Community Connection. I'm your host, Gloria Inlow. As many of our viewers know, the reason that I host this show is because I think Jefferson City is a great place to live and raise a family in, and there's also a lot to do. I hear every once in a while from people who say that they don't know what's going on, they don't know what to go out and do, but there is a lot happening. We have festivals, we have great theater district, we have concerts, and we also have a wealth of opportunities that are presented to us by the Missouri River Regional Library. And with us today, we have Claudia Schoonover and George Dillard. Hi. Hi, welcome to the show, you guys. Thank you, thanks for having us. Thanks, Gloria. Well, weather's getting a little bit cooler out and might not be as much to do outside, but I'm sure there are still many things for people to do inside. Um, one thing I know that's coming up at the library is a discussion series on the Civil War. And George, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, as you probably know, this is the 150th anniversary of the Civil War. Uh, Missouri was second to Virginia, uh, the most, uh, the state with the most battlefields. So we're doing sort of our part on this by channeling our uh, Capital Read program around a single book, March, by Geraldine Brooks. And this is a novel set during the time of the Civil War. Um, it has a companion novel, Little Women, and we're going to be talking about that too. But what Claudia and I have done is drawn up a series of programs touching on different aspects of the Civil War and especially American culture during that time. Uh, all of these are free and open to the public. Uh, they're guaranteed, they're, they're, they're uh, aimed at an adult audience, but they're suitable for anyone and everyone. Uh, our first uh, night is Tuesday, October the 18th, and uh, Claudia found this gentleman, a man named Mark Rehagen, mm -hmm. who does a uh, sort of reenactment of Abraham Lincoln. He's going to be at our library that evening uh, delivering various addresses and conversations as Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. And this is a good way to kick off the series. Uh, it should bring in a lot of people, uh, again, adults and families. Wow, sounds interesting. It really is a family series. Um, Little Women, of course, is a children's book, and we're encouraging people to uh, maybe reread that or read it for the first time. It's mm -hmm. a parallel novel with March. It takes the character of Mr. March who has volunteered to uh, go to the Civil War and fight. And we learn about his life during that time. So March tells his story. And uh, you know, a lot of people are familiar with Little Women and that's kind of the story of uh, the daughters and the mother. Right. So this is kind of, uh, I guess, expanding upon that and saying same time frame, but exactly. different side of the story. Exactly, his, his viewpoint, so. And I understand that the book is actually uh, a pretty, pretty good read and pretty prestigious. It is. Novel. It really. It's one of my top five, Gloria. Uh, it won the 2006 Pulitzer Prize for Fiction. Geraldine Brooks is a uh, cr critically acclaimed author. She's written at least, I would say, eight novels, maybe mm -hmm. more, mm -hmm. and just had one out this year. And uh, she is an author who travels the country promoting her books. She's from Australia, native Australian. And I ask about the possibility of her coming to Jefferson City. She will be uh, heading to Australia, Australia to spend six months of her, of her year there and promote her new book that came out in the spring. And so uh, she's also pretty pricey and uh, might have been able to Skype with us, but her schedule was really tight. Right. Um, but this book is, is a great standalone book, a community read um, is uh, something we have been doing here in Jefferson City for the last, this is our sixth year, mm -hmm. and we have generally brought authors in, but um, like George said, we're trying something different this year. We're, um, uh, with, the, with the 150th uh, sesquicentennial, we thought it was a, a great time to do something a little different and have this discussion series, and so uh, March is part of that, and it's something we're encouraging the whole community to read. Um, is there is this something that should be read uh, prior to coming to some of these events, or is it just something that's ongoing? Or you know, if people are are interested in maybe the discussion series and they don't want to feel like they're missing out on something by having not read the book, is that an issue? Um, 
Not for the first couple of programs now on the 22nd, is that right, George, of yeah, November? The, the actual discussion of our capital retitle, March, is going to be the 22nd of November. Mm -hmm. uh, Claudia and I will be there and a bunch of other folks as well to talk about this book. I would say you don't have to read the book to come to any of these, really. It's better if you do, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, an another aspect of this, you talk about Little Women. Um, we're going to have a discussion of Little Women on Tuesday, November the 8th. And uh, this is the Louis Louisa May Alcott book mm -hmm. uh, that follows the March family, uh, just like Geraldine Brooks's book. Uh, uh, Tracy Wegman, uh, a local uh, noteworthy, will be with us to lead that discussion. And after that discussion, on that Tuesday night, we'll see the movie uh, based on that book with Susan Sarandon and Winona Ryder. Mm -hmm. um, incidentally, this is an absolutely beautiful film. It's wonderfully photographed and uh, thematically and visually, it makes a, a great introduction into the holiday season, I would say. Mm -hmm. So it's a good way to kick that whole time of year off, is to come to hear about the book, Little Women, and to see the film. Now we talked about, and you touched on briefly, that Little Women is a children's book, and it's something that you know I know we read in our mm -hmm. family when we were, mm -hmm. we were fairly young. Would you say that March is in that same vein, or is there stuff that might kind of go over younger it's, kids' heads? It's definitely an adult book. I would say at least 16 and up. Okay. Um, I, and I don't think you have to read Little Women to enjoy this book, but I think it enriches the reading experience of It helps of to March. identify with it the It does. Character. It certainly does. Right. Um, well, George, a lot of these events are probably geared towards, you know, an older audience, right. an adult audience. Um, but I would say there's some valuable uh, history lessons there, too, for maybe uh, even the high school set, if they're wanting to learn oh. a little bit more about Missouri's history in particular. Yeah, and yeah. particular this time period of the middle of the 19th century. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to show on November the 1st, which is a Tuesday, um, uh, the, the film about Robert Gould Shaw and the, the all-black regiment that fought in the Civil War. Mm -hmm. Denzel Washington, Freeman, uh, Morgan Freeman, and uh, Broderick Crawford are in this great, great flick. Uh, this is an example, though, of, uh, of the series itself. Uh, it's, it's a tough movie. It's set in the Civil War. Yeah. Got some adult issues there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's okay for the whole family. It's not for little kids unattended. Mm -hmm. Right. But for adults and, and sophisticated teens, it's not only a great flick, it gives you a lot to talk about. And the beauty of this night is we're going to talk about the, we're going to see this film together and then talk about it in the way we talk about the book. Right. Uh, I think people get a big kick out of it. Now, every once in a while, there's some uh, sentiment expressed that movies have a hard time living up to the books they're based mm -hmm. on a lot. You know, and there's, and there's some people that just prefer reading to, mm -hmm. to watching a movie. But would you say, George, that these films are fairly accurate and are, are do a good job of embodying oh, the yeah. works they're based on? Yeah, uh, in fact, uh, Glory, uh, one of my favorite movies, uh, not just about the Civil War, but my favorite dramas of all time, is one of the most authentic uh, depictions of the Civil War that's ever been made. It's uh, sophisticated in the extreme. Uh, it's realistic to detail. All the weapons and uniforms for reenactors out there are, uh, are accurate. But the human drama is also following the, the historical story to the letter. Mm -hmm. This is just a great movie on every, on every front. You know, I should say, Gloria, that I, I do, aside from the Civil War stuff, I host a lot of different programs at the library, and, and one of them is called Reader's Eye. And once a month, we see a movie based on a book. And you will be shocked, or surprised at least, <laughs> to know how often the movie transcends the book. Uh, a perfect example, not to get too far from the Civil War, <laughs> is uh, Kubrick's great 2001 A Space Odyssey. Mm -hmm. Because this was based on a short story by Arthur C. Clarke. He later turned it into a novel. But that short story is six pages long. Oh, wow. It's an astronaut mm -hmm. walking on the dark side of a mountain on the moon's surface, and that's it. And huh. so Kubrick, inspired by that, made this mammoth uh, spiritual journey of a film. So it goes, it goes both ways. Yeah, yeah. And well, and you know, I think everyone, when they read a book, they bring something to it. They bring mm -hmm. their own ideas of what people should look like exactly. and what, how people should act mm -hmm. and, and the setting. And I think that sometimes movies, it's just that's one person's interpretation of it, sure. one person's stamp on sure. it. Yeah. Yeah. I think because I love this book so much, I, that might be a struggle for, for me. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to mention that on October 25th, we have a presentation by Greg Walk, who is the president of the Missouri Civil War Heritage Foundation. And he's going to talk about um, the Civil War. His, his presentation uh, is The entitled, Impact of the Civil War on Popular Culture. Right. 
and I know he's spoken in the Jefferson City area, but I think that uh, this is a presentation that he hasn't done mm -hmm. here in Jefferson City. So I, I think it'll be a, a great night and we'll hopefully bring some people out who've heard him speak before. I think he's uh, quite good. Well, I think that's an interesting aspect of that, the title, its impact on popular culture, because obviously the Civil War, you know, it has a big impact on our nation and, and how we've come through it, but I think maybe not a lot of people would stop to think of mm -hmm. how it affects modern day popular culture. That's mm -hmm. kind of a, a different spin on things. Yeah. It is, it is, and we finish our series with a, a program entitled Civil Conversations, and we're drawing on this big theatrical community we have in Jefferson City, which I think a, a lot of people are surprised when they move here to town. Yeah. See, Jefferson City is very surprising. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and that we have this huge, um, talented bunch of people, and so some of those folks have gotten together, and they are reenacting conversations that happened or that could have happened in Jefferson City at the time they're they're uh, reenacting prominent citizens and so mm -hmm. uh, Mark Rehagen is is heading that group up as well he's our Abraham Lincoln and he tells me that uh, people who attend might be drawn into those conversations <laughs> with those prominent Jefferson City folks let, let me say quickly that's November the 29th mm -hmm. and that's how we close out the series mm -hmm. and that uh, again is a Tuesday night uh, all of these are on Tuesday nights uh, so uh, to help people remember. But the flyer I'm referring to is quite beautiful and ornate. Uh, <laughs> but you can pick this up at the library. It's got all the programs, where they meet, and when they meet. Um, you know, there's something else, too. The civil conversations that we're going to hear, um, there's something really curious about this because our country has changed dramatically and was changed by the Civil War. However, human nature does not change by centuries. Human nature may change by the millennia that we go through. And I think people will be able to relate on a human level to everything these 19th century people say to each other. You know, we'll be able to put ourselves in their position, mm -hmm. in their society at the time, mm -hmm. and see our own human reactions. I, I think it's going to be an absolutely riveting night, just like a night of great theater. That's right. Well, that's uh, and, and George, you mentioned the flyer there, and that's going to uh, let people know when they can find some of these Civil War discussion series events. And of course, Claudia, we also have, always have the program That's guide. right. It's in the program guide as well. So you can stop by the library and at any of our public desks, you can pick one of these um, items up. And let me mention Gloria, if I may. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have a series of flyers about my films, thus. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, but uh, every third Thursday of the month, I show a movie at the library. We have a really nice state-of-the-art digital projection system, surround sound uh, system. Uh, but each movie is based on a book. And, and what this group does, we've been meeting for years, we see the film together, and then we discuss it just like you would a book. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful because uh, unlike a book where you read the thing uh, in solitude and then come together, we experience these movies together in real time. Mm -hmm. So you come out of the film and instead of leaving the theater, you linger for a bit and talk about it. And so yeah. that's coming up the third Thursday of every month. Uh, and and uh, I hope everybody comes. Well, it's one of my favorite things to do after we see a really great movie is to talk about it. And sometimes mm -hmm. the discussion you have is better than the, the film itself. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've had such amazing yeah. nights with this. Uh, we, even if a film uh, doesn't live up to our expectations, the discussion can make it all worth it. That's yeah. a blast, it really is. And so Everybody's perspective too. I mean, right. it really adds to the richness of the whole experience. Yeah, if someone can see something and come away with a totally different interpretation right. or, yeah. So right. that's, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna be the, every third Thursday of the month? Right, every third Thursday. I, I show movies almost every week. Uh, I show one, a Friday night uh, uh, film the second Friday of every month. Those tend to be a little, uh, I should say, lighter. Mm -hmm. You know, classic films, fun films. Um, they don't have quite the gravitas of these reader's eye titles, and you need that, you know? You need a break from some of this, uh, this uh, heaviness from time yeah. to time. Yeah, you, you gotta balance it out. Yeah, That's boy. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to thank both of you for coming on and talking about this, uh, the discussion series and movie nights. Sounds like a lot of fun and a lot of opportunities for people to get out and uh, meet new people and have a good night of uh, cinema or uh, reading, yeah. uh, what, how we're at, we have it. So thank you so much for coming by. Thank wow, you for the thanks for having us. <laughs> I'd like to thank our viewers at home for watching. Don't go anywhere because when we come back from the break, we're going to have another group on to talk about even more fun things that are going to be happening in Jefferson City this November. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten little piggies ready to play. The big pig is Pedro. Pedro Piggy. He's the big piggy. <laughs> Everyday moments can become teaching moments because learning starts long before school does. Give your child the start they need at bornlearning.org. More than half of America's most important military decisions are made here. No, it's not the Pentagon. Or NORAD. Or the headquarters of Air Combat Command. It's the place that employs over 50% of our armed forces. It's where you work. See you in a couple weeks. So when your employees in the National Guard and Reserve need time off to serve, give them the freedom to protect ours. Hello, welcome back to Community Connection. I'm your host, Gloria Inlow. During the first half of the show, we told you about a discussion series that's taking place at the Missouri River Regional Library dealing with the Civil War. Uh, it's going to be a very serious topic, but definitely a very entertaining discussion series. Now we're going to talk about something a little bit different, but just as fun. And we have with us today Donna Scheidt from the Jefferson City Daycare Center and Claudia Scott, who is a director of a play that we're going to tell our audience about in a little bit. Uh, well, welcome to the show, everyone. Thank you, Gloria. Well, Donna, uh, if you could tell our audience a little bit about Jefferson City Daycare Center. One thing I know is you got a lot of kids there. Sure, Gloria. Jefferson City Daycare Center is a United Way agency. We're one of the 25 United Way agencies in our community. We're licensed for 99 children from birth to eight years of age. And we are full. We have an accredited early childhood education program. And we run 52 weeks a year. Wow. Um, I know that one of the things that's really important to the daycare is, of course, you know, there's, there's the fun things too, but really when it comes down to it, you've got to have fundraisers every once in a while. Can you tell us about uh, the important role that fundraisers play in running the daycare center? Yes. Um, I told you we were a United Way agency, and as a United Way agency, we are certainly dependent upon United Way funds. They help the daycare center, they keep the daycare center open, quite honestly. Um, parents, of course, pay their fees, but we also do have a couple of fundraisers every year to help us um, do some of the things that we normally would not be able to do to support the daycare center. For example, we are getting ready to install a new playground on our, with our old children, and playgrounds are very expensive. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that we're hoping to help fund um, a at least one of the activities on the playground is with a play, our dinner theater, which this will be our third annual dinner theater at Summit Lake Winery on November 12th. And it is co-sponsored by the winery and by Scene One Theaters. And we will, it's open to the public and it's a great time because everyone, you come and you eat at the winery and then you get to watch a comedy. And I'm really looking forward to this year's comedy because it's gonna be a little different. Well, speaking of that, Claudia Scott, I understand you're going to be directing this comedy that Donna's talking about. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the play that everyone's going to be able I to see? I can. It's called Retiring Edwina. I play Edwina, and she is a college professor who has come upon retirement, and she's being honored by four of her former students who are also sorority members. And they... The audience will be involved a little bit in the show as well as we, the, we will be reacting with them. And there will be a waiter 
who will be circling around through the audience as well. Um, two of my friends, David Walling and Laura Wiedenhoff, wrote this play in about two, two and a half weeks. We didn't get the go-ahead to get the play that we were going to do. So the kids said, oh, we can write something that's, you know, and by golly, they did. It's funny, it's quick, it's witty. Uh, there's a little, little heart-tugging part of it as well, hopefully, if we do it right. Mm -hmm. um, the, the cast members comprise of Barbara Doughty, Laura Morris, Mel Richardson, Laura Wiedenhoff. Our waiter is Eddie Andrews, and of course myself, I'm in it as well. Well, it sounds like uh, it's going to be an exclusive uh, performance then if this was just something that was recently written and mm -hmm. per performed for the first time. Yes. Yes, I do. Well, Claudia, um, I understand, you know, this is going to be a dinner theater. Uh, is that something that you're familiar with or is this kind of going to be a first time experience for you as well? As far as acting in a din dinner theater, yes, it will be my first time to do that. Um, I've been to several dinner theaters. My experience has mainly been with the Little Theater and uh, I've directed as well as acted with that for 18 years. Mm -hmm. And um, I've also done a lot of shows at Wegmans, uh, Scene One Theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a black box, it's very unique. You're up close and personal with the audience. So, but dinner theater, no, I haven't <laughs> done that. Well, uh, you mentioned Scene One Theaters that you do some work with, and I know that Scene One Theaters, sometimes they show stuff that's a little um, different from your normal fare and avant-garde avant -garde <laughs> and, and kind of tailored for specific audiences. Mm -hmm. Is this play kind of in that same vein? We tried not to make it that way because <laughs> of, um, but there will be a little, there's some, a little language, there will be uh, some drinking that we're having water, we're not really drinking. <laughs> um, there's not any adult humor or any type of that so much to speak, but it's it's going to be fun. It's going to be, I think the audience will get a very big kick out of it. It's very well written. Well, and obviously being at a winery, though, this is kind of going to be an adult event, I, I would take it. Mm -hmm. That is correct. This is an adult event. It is um, great. It's up in the Capitol View room. It is Saturday, November 12th, so it's a little... Uh, you know, it's not that far away, mm -hmm. and our doors will open at 6 p.m., and dinner starts at 6.30, and then the play starts at 7.30, and I am very excited <laughs> and can't wait to see this play every year. Um, they do such a great job. It's just a wonderful, easy way to, um, to, do to donate to a charity. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know... Um, as you said, this is the third year that you've done this, and I know at Summit Lake Winery, they have other events there and stuff that, uh, they've kind of been a partner of the daycare center and helping with the fundraising aspect of it. How did that relationship come to be? Um, well, you know, John Ferrier is, the, is a supporter of the Jefferson City Daycare Center. He owns Summit Lake Winery, and he's just great to work with. And Mark Wegman owns Scene One Theater, and he also is just great to work with. We've been very lucky to have some you know, the community really does get behind the Jefferson City Daycare Center. We um, are certainly an important part of this community and the community is so important to us. So it's, it's great that he donates his, you know, the Capitol View room upstairs. He works very well with us. Um, you know, we have to, we pay for the meal and really that's all we have to pay for there. So, but it's a great fundraiser for the daycare center. And it sounds like a lot of the funds, I mean, they go directly to things that are going to impact the kids at the daycare center. It's, it's not, you know, sometimes you wonder where your money is going to go when you donate to a cause, but it sounds like a lot of this just stays local and goes to kids that you might even know. Yes, because at the daycare center, our doors are open to everyone. Um, the only rules that we have is that families have to either, parents either have to be working or going to school. And we do have a sliding fee scale because we are a United Way agency. We have families in every one of our fee categories. We have families that are not subsidized by United Way because they do not need to be. And yet we have quite a few families who are very low, you know, the working poor, very low income, but wouldn't be able to afford most daycare centers, but all children deserve quality. So um, that's why I feel that our agency and our mission is so important. Um, 
because we do provide a safe place for children to stay while parents are working or going to school. Mm -hmm. um, well, Claudia, I understand, uh, you know, this is obviously something you're doing for the daycare center as far as a fundraiser for them, but um, did you want to talk a little bit about scene one, two, some of the other projects that are going on with sure, that theater? Sure, sure. Um, this almost sounds Again, I'm in the next show that's coming up. I've been really lucky. I'm doing two shows at one time. I didn't have white hair before all this started. <laughs> but I do. Um, it's called Bombshells. It's uh, six monologues by six different women at different stages of their lives, as well as different things going on in their lives. And um, it plays October this 20th, it's next week, 20, 21st, and 2nd, and then I'm sorry, is it 27th, 8th, and 9th, the following week? Right. I think so. It's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of the last two weekends in October. Mm -hmm. Doors open at 7. Uh, the show starts at 7.30. The 20th of October is a $5 half-price night. The rest of the nights are $10, which is still a great, great, great deal. Uh, for a theater. It's, it's quality shows. I know all the ladies that are in it. Um, it's going to be a great time. Some of them are serious. Some of them are hilarious. There's a new, a new mother with a baby in it that it shows her going through the things that new mothers do. And so you're, it's a good time. Well, it sounds like a, a good time. And for $10, you can't beat that because no. I don't think you can even go and see a movie for that anymore. No. So mm -hmm. for live theater, that's definitely a bargain. And I think the winery is even, if I saw this correctly, is providing hors d'oeuvres and uh, wine, too. I'm hoping I'm saying that correctly, but I did <laughs> see that on the bottom of the flyer. Well, Donna, as I said, I've been to a few of these events, and if the winery is going to be there serving food and wine, it's going to be <laughs> delicious, that's for sure. <laughs> well, Donna, uh, for people that might be interested in attending the uh, fundraiser at the winery, uh, where can they find out more information or, or get tickets or reserve a space? Um, to reserve a space, you need to call the Jefferson City Day Care Center. We're in the phone book. We are on the web, but call us at 636-6461. Tickets are $30 each, and that includes the, um, the evening, all the events of the evening. And in my opinion, it's very good bang for your buck. For $30, you're going to get a great meal, and you're going to get um, a great play. I'm really looking forward to that. There is a cash bar available, of course, mm -hmm. and it's just um, a, going to be a great evening, and I'm really looking forward to it. And Claudia, I think we were talking about this uh, a little bit before we actually started the show, but not going to be a very long uh, play either. It sounds like it's going to be kind of fast-paced and something that will keep your interest. We've got, I think it's about 30 to 40 minutes, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be. It won't, the first one that we were going to do was a, like an hour and a half, but... I think this one will be 30 or 40 minutes. Okay. Well, it sounds like a lot of fun. And Donna and Claudia, we appreciate both of you coming thank on. Thank you so much. Thanks, Gloria. Always good to be here. Thank you. And thank you for all the work you do, too, with the Jefferson City Daycare Center. Of course, my daughter goes there and, and loves it. And I can definitely vouch the fact that uh, that daycare, that uh, play, playground that you all are putting in will be appreciated and put to good use. Good. So we encourage everyone to attend that if they can. Again, that's going to be November 12th at Summit Lake Winery. And uh, if you need more information or want to get tickets, reserve your space now. You can get a hold of the daycare center. I'd like to thank our guests at home for watching. Don't go anywhere because we have more great JCTV programming coming your way. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>